introduced me to this um, concept that we're going to talk about today. So, okay, let's go. This is Webster's definition of the word salvage. When I think about opiate salvage, though, I'm thinking about salvaging the life or function of a patient who's on opioids and not doing well, but where opiates may need to be part of their ongoing therapy. And this idea <clears throat> really comes from the fact that sometimes discontinuation is a bad idea. Sometimes it's not feasible. Sometimes it's downright dangerous. And we need to recognize in patients that we've started on opiates that we can't just remove the opiates and everything's gonna be okay. So we need a better answer, I think, than just cause to the question, why is this patient on 600 milligrams of morphine? Why did you taper this patient off of a very stable regimen? We need to look deeply and ask the question, can we make this patient better? Can we reduce their risk? And why is buprenorphine part of this? Well, the question, the better question is, why not use buprenorphine? It has a ceiling effect for respiratory depression and that makes it safer. And it has no ceiling effect for analgesia and that makes it effective. It additionally has some other properties that we can really leverage to make our patients better. So here's Buzz. I met Buzz in the hospital. Buzz had three broken ribs after passing out, uh, out following taking 1,000 milligrams of oral Demerol. Buzz also uses a lot of morphine, and multiple people have tried to taper Buzz, recognizing this isn't a great regimen for him, and Buzz does not tolerate tapering. And maybe this is why. This is dopamine, and dopamine feels really good. And everybody here today is here because you made enough dopamine to get out of bed. <laughs> but not all patients make enough dopamine when they've been on long-term opiate therapy. So I want to introduce you to Angie. She's another one of my patients. She's a nurse with fibromyalgia. She used a little Norco, then a little more, and two, three. She doesn't know how much she uses, but she has withdrawal at work between doses, and she's having trouble, and when I see her, her job is in jeopardy, and potentially her career, and maybe her life. This is Gloria. Gloria has a problem list, as you can see, about as long as my arm. She uses a lot of methadone, a little bit of hydromorphone, some clonazepam. And Gloria's got a long QT interval on the day I see her in the office. And oh, by the way, Gloria needs a knee replacement. And lastly, I want to introduce you to my patient, Barbara. Barbara has major depression refractory to almost every type of treatment. She has multiple 5150 holds a year for self-harm behavior. She uses oxycodone 15 milligrams four times a day, but it was started for post-operative pain from a surgery she had two years ago. Now, should any of these people be on opiates? Probably not, but they are, and we gotta meet them where they are. And three of the four of these patients, I feel, really have imminent risk of death, and the fourth patient, loss of career, loss of job, and potentially also loss of life. So we really have a risky situation. So let's go back to Buzz. We transitioned Buzz from 600 milligrams of morphine to 16 milligrams of buprenorphine using a traditional abstinence induction, and Buzz got better. Now Buzz's pain didn't get better, but the rest of Buzz got a lot better. He stopped passing out, sleep apnea improved, testosterone mood all normalized. And in case it seems like a lot of buprenorphine, uh, a lot high dose of morphine, this is a patient paper that actually shows that on doses well over 1,000 milligrams of morphine equivalents, you can safely convert patients to buprenorphine. And pain scores generally, although not with buzz, go down. Now, Angie transitioned using a home induction, and she stabilized on four milligrams a day, and over the next eight years, Angie just tapered off, and one day she just wasn't using it anymore. She continues to do well at work, and she's actually two years away from retirement and looking forward to uh, finishing her career. Gloria, because of the long QT interval, we did a bridged induction. We changed her to hydromorphone immediately, and then from that to buprenorphine. Her QT interval normalized almost immediately. Her sleep apnea improved, her pain control improved, and we sent her to the OR on buprenorphine for her knee replacement. So if that seems like a radical idea, uh, CSAM's own Anna Lemke wrote this very nice uh, editorial for pain, me pain medicine, saying that not only can you 
but you probably should send your patients to the OR maintaining their buprenorphine throughout the perioperative period. So, lastly, we transitioned Barbara using a modified Bernese similar to what was discussed by Dr. Kornfeld because we felt any abstinence put her at risk of self-harm. Since transitioning to buprenorphine, no self-harm behavior, PHQ-9 decreased dramatically, no psychiatric hospitalizations, and her pain is relatively well managed. This is the, one of the papers discussing the Bernese method, which as was previously discussed, is basically a slow, gentle cross taper, adding small doses of buprenorphine in and letting the patient, in our case, self-taper their original opioid down to off. And if you think Barbara's mood elevation is a coincidence, probably not. Buprenorphine is being studied right now as a mood uh, stabilizer. This is an interesting paper looking at low and high dose buprenorphine, interestingly, with an antagonist showing depression scores go down. So in summary, I just want to say some people can't be tapered off, some people shouldn't be tapered off, and some people, patients will taper off buprenorphine on their own when they might not have tapered off of a different opiate. Some people need an immediate intervention, some people have interdose withdrawal, and some people are gonna benefit from the other qualities of buprenorphine. But in the end, what we're charged with doing, we who started these people on these drugs, is to make these patients better by really any means necessary. And sometimes that's tapering off in discontinuation, but buprenorphine is a powerful role in our tool chest for helping these patients, and thank you.